Hey everybody, how's it going? Hope you're having a lovely day. So five years ago, I did a video on Google's voice to text and why it is that I found it creepy. I despise the BlackBerry Storm phone that I had in 2009. It, it traumatized me to the point of never wanting to type on a touchscreen again. And when I got my HTC Incredible Android phone, I discovered this great thing called voice to text where instead of having to type everything out, I could say three or four sentences, I could dictate it into my phone and it would work. Now, back then, phones were not exactly as powerful as they are now. They couldn't do this stuff locally. So what it would do is it would upload your voice recording to Google servers, and then it would send back the transcription of the text of whatever it is that you said. They have my info, and this is not anonymized in any way. So let's see here. So I was talking about a woman that I had dated many years ago. So you can just uh, yeah, can hit play. I dated a woman seven years ago who said, comma, it's not your money, comma, but the person you had to be. You probably see where I'm going with this. One of the things that surprised me that I went over in this video is that every single thing that I had ever said, whether it was, you know, me text messaging a taxi driver, I'll be right down, or an argument with my ex-girlfriend over words in the dictionary would wind up showing up in my personal account. And this was something that kind of freaked me out. So if my Gmail account gets hacked, there's literally not only an audio file, but also a transcription of the audio file of every single thing I've ever said into my phone. Now, the response that a lot of people have made to this is, well, you consented to that in the agreement and you just didn't read it. And very similar to what I said in the video on Sony and Discovery, where they call it a purchase in the product page, but then on page 21 of the EULA, they tell you that what you're actually purchasing is a temporary license to view the content that can be broken at any given time. And we actually look for this, you'll, you'll find that the, they said this on, on, on page 22. It's there on page 22. Uh, all content provided a license on a non-exclusive and revocable basis. This kind of stuff pisses me off. I, you may have gotten me. You may have roofied me and had it on page 800 of the agreement that you have the ability to retain this recording until the end of time. But that's not something that I was okay with. I found that creepy, and I went through that in this video that I did here. Now, a lot of you on this channel say, Lewis, all you do is complain. You don't actually come up with solutions to the problem. What we've done here at the organization I now work for, we have a fellowship program where people will get $20,000 for a few months to come here and work on their own personal project. And one of the people that applied had a very interesting Linux caption software. So I tapped him on the shoulder, and I said, hey, you know, like this is something that's pissed me off for a long time. You want to make something that does speech to text uh, that works on an Android phone? And he said, sure. So we hired him. And since we hired him, he's created that. He created what was called Futo Voice Input. It's a piece of software that essentially is a voice input that does not connect to the internet. It does not connect to the internet. You could take away its internet privileges and it will still allow you to have very eloquent voice to text. The problem with this application is that you had to install a different keyboard. If you were using the default Google uh, Google keyboard, Gboard that comes with most Android phones, this wouldn't work. If you were using Samsung's keyboard, that wouldn't work. So you would have to find a keyboard and then find one that works with our voice to text and try to implement it and give them, it was just a royal pain in the ass. So what we've done here is we've actually created a keyboard that integrates with that voice to text thing that we made so that when you install this, you get the voice, you get the keyboard, you get everything. This allows you to train your AI locally and fine-tune it locally without ever connecting it to the internet so that nobody can see your voice recordings except for you. So I wanted to demonstrate this thing a little bit just I wanted to, because I'm pretty excited about this. You know, it's been, been five years since I did that video, so I'd like to update it with what we've actually created. So take a look over here. So this is the keyboard itself. You have a bunch of different options in here. One of the things I like about this app is you can have a personal dictionary. So for instance, my boss's name is Aaron, E-R-O-N. Yet a voice to text is going to go, I've never heard of an Aaron in my life. It's going to spell it A-A-R-O-N. So even when I'm using the default model, which will run on a computer or one that's very slow, this is still going to show me uh, his name. So let me, let's just try that over here. His name is Aaron. That is the way you spell his name. Let's see if the personal dictionary works. Is that not fast or what? Now, let's try something different. Let's, let's, try to, let's try to F this thing up a little bit. Since people have been saying, well, if it can't connect to the internet, surely it's not going to be able to do as good as Google's keyboard. How many people that are watching this video right now as it's either being filmed or once it's on YouTube remember what supercalifragilisticexpialidocious means? Mary Poppins? Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious? Or am I just a boomer? Let's see if it gets it right. Okay, let's try something else because it's, it got Mary Poppins wrong. So one of the things that I like about this is you have a fast phone and you don't need it to be that fast. You could go over here and you could go over to languages and you could import your own model because who the hell are we to tell you which models you're allowed to use? You click over here, you go import, delete this, delete this, my files are showing, fuck that. Delete, 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 delete. 
And now I could import a model that's a little larger that's also going to be slower. So you can do this if you have a phone that's a bit faster. And it's also going to remember all the stuff that you put into your personal dictionary. So I'm going to go back over here. How many people remember who Mary Poppins is, the person who used to say supercalifragilisticexpialidocious? That's pretty cool. Uh, also, this does work as a keyboard. So if you want to type on the keyboard, you can type on this keyboard. I type like a boomer. And you can also kind of train it. So if I want to you know, never have this be suggested again, you have that. Uh, it, how you know? it has. Nextcloud always does this shit where it covers my text. It's just one of the many reasons that I, uh, I can't wait to replace this thing. You can type on this keyboard. Fuck Nextcloud for covering that. It always does the thing where it says rich text. Okay, so I can do that. And watch this. I can also do swipe typing. So for those of you who like swipe typing, I never use this. It really messes me up on any keyboard that I use. All right, let's try swipe typing. Oh, God, I hate when it does Nextcloud does that. Let's try that. I hate when Nextcloud does Eh? Dies? Did? Died? Eh, let's try again. Does? I... You get swipe typing, normal typing, voice typing, choose your own model. This is an application where you can see the source code. It is available on our website for anybody who wants to read it and confirm that this application does not require internet access and does not spy on you. This application is essentially, um, it, we want people to pay for it. It is a paid application. We're figuring if we're making applications for like this for 10 bucks or less that it is fair to ask to pay for the engineers that created. However, this is an honor system over here. So if you go over to the payment tab, what you'll notice is that every single piece of functionality in this app works under a free trial trial period, that is eternity. You have an infinite free trial period, and our DRM to figure out if you've paid or not is after you've paid, it'll tell you that you've paid, and if you have already paid elsewhere, you can click I already paid over here, and then it's never going to bother you again. That is the honor system, and if you click I already paid when you have not paid, that is between you and your God. That is between you and your God. Hell no. That's about that. We're really just trying to solve these problems one by one. One, by hiring the image team so that they can work full time to make this better so that hopefully in a year or so, we can have a legitimate solution to Google Photos and iCloud that I could have my stepmom use without having to know what Docker is. And over here, I would like her to have a voice to text input that does not require that she has to install a separate keyboard and configure. I want it to be something, all the software should be something that's not only low cost, something that where you could see the source code and verify it's not spying on you, but it also has to be software that's good and software that's so easy to use that my stepmom can use it. It cannot, essentially, this is my test for any of this stuff. If my stepmom tries this and goes, I can't figure this out or this sucks, it doesn't work. It's not just about creating solutions where you can verify that it's not spying on you. It's not just about creating things that are not closed source. It's about creating software that's genuinely better than what comes from the manufacturer. And I will stand behind the fact that I genuinely believe this voice input to be better than the manufacturer. Because if it wasn't, like, again, I, I just, I, I wouldn't use it. He also made an application called Live Captions. I'm going to link to that down below. That was part of his fellowship. It's a lovely little application that for Linux. He noticed that for Linux, accessibility software is really hard to come by. So if you are hard of hearing and you're using a Linux computer, you know, a year and a half ago, there really wasn't a lot out there for you. So he created this little lovely piece of software. It's fairly simple to use. You can install it via Flatpak. And it has captions that show up on your screen for a variety of audio input sources that you choose to use. It's fairly easy. And again, if you're somebody hard of hearing that uses Linux, this is something that I think may be really cool for you. If you have any input on this application, if you have feature requests, bug reports, anything like that, I will include an email down below. Please do send it. We are listening. Whether you are a paid user or you are part of the infinite free trial, we are going to listen to your input one way or the other. I did mark this video as a sponsored video. I want to be clear about this. This is not because I am getting paid in a quid pro quo to mention the software on camera, regardless of whether or not it sucks. It is because I am a full-time employee of the organization that created the software. I was involved in the fellowship process. The person who applied for this fellowship applied for it because he saw it in one of my videos. I chose to have this person for this particular application. I advocated for him to come work here so that he could create his fellowship application of live captions. And then I kind of, you know, twisted his arm into making this thing. This is really not one of those cases where somebody emails me and says, will you shill a crappy VPN service for 5,000 bucks? This is a company that I work at full time where I do manage these projects and I try to turn them into software that I would actually myself want to use. I want to solve the problems that I have. Many people People ask, you know, why did they choose Image? What are they doing with Image? I used Nextcloud and it drove me insane. <laughs> like, why give them millions of dollars to produce that? Because Nextcloud pissed me off. Why make this software? 
because Google speech to text pissed me off. Let me know what you think in the comments down below, and let me know what you think of the software at the email that I will leave down below. And that's it for today. And as always, I hope you learned something. And remember, the less of your personal data that you give Google, the better. And for all those people out there that are going to say, you're paranoid. What do you have to worry about? You're a conspiracy theorist. Well, so is the New York Times. Do you want to give these people your data? Because I don't. I'll see you in the next one. Bye now.